Hello, I'm Andrew Bugby, and this is Step by Step, where we take practitioners through important veterinary conditions and issues step by step. This episode of Step by Step is sponsored by DECRA, the makers of Veteral Capsules or Trialistane. Veteral Capsules or Trialistane are the only FDA-approved treatment for pituitary-dependent hyperadrenocorticism, or PDH, and adrenal-dependent hyperadrenocorticism, or ADH, in the United States. Although daily administration of veteral capsules does not provide a medical cure for Cushing syndrome, it may allow the disease to be successfully managed and enhance the dog's vitality and quality of life. This algorithm will take us step-by-step through the suggested management and treatment plan of canines diagnosed with Cushing syndrome. We will start with treatment. The first step is to confirm your diagnosis of hyperadrenocorticism. A previous step-by-step episode is available for your review by Dr. Cindy Ward, who walks you through the diagnostic workup of a Cushnoid patient. After we're comfortable with our Cushing syndrome diagnosis, we start on day one with instituting veteral capsules or trialistane at an approximate dose of one mg per pound or 2.2 mg per keg once daily it is ideal to give the medication by mouth, with food, and in the morning. After starting Veteril, it takes time for the medication's enzyme-blocking activity to reach its full effect in suppressing cortisol concentrations. Therefore, our first monitoring visit will occur on day 10 to 14. History, physical exam, and serum biochemistry with an electrolyte panel, as well as performance of an ACTH stimulation test within four to six hours of the morning dose of the patient's Veteril, should be performed. It is always good to ensure that the patient's pill was given in the morning with food. A good way to view this ACTH stimulation test is that it should be started three to five hours after the dose to ensure the entire test is completed within six hours of the morning dose of Veteril. It is also helpful for the clinician to note the time that an individual patient's test was started as a way to try to ensure every future monitoring visit starts around the same time to allow a better comparison of apple to apple for cortisol results. Assessment. Measure cortisol levels after ACTH stimulation testing. If the post-ACTH serum cortisol is less than 1.45 micrograms per deciliter or less than 40 nanomoles per liter and the patient is doing clinically well, stop your veteral capsules for approximately seven days, return to day one of the algorithm, and then reinstitute veteral at a lower dose. You need to repeat ACTH stimulation testing after 10 to 14 days from the start of the lower dose of the medication to ensure that a more appropriate level of cortisol control has been achieved. If the post-ACTH serum cortisol concentration is greater than 1.45 micrograms per deciliter or greater than 40 nanomoles per liter and the patient is doing clinically well, continue the current dose of therapy. It is not recommended at this visit to increase the dose of trialistane even if your cortisol concentrations post-stimulation are greater than 9.1 micrograms per deciliter. It will take at least 30 days from the institution of Veteril to show its full effect, so increasing the dose of this visit risks causing oversuppression of cortisol concentrations during the first month of therapy. After 30 days from initiation of treatment, a history physical exam, serum biochemistry with electrolyte panel, and an ACTH stimulation test four to six hours after the morning dose of Veteril should be performed. If a patient is showing clinical signs consistent with corticosteroid withdrawal, also known as a relative cortisol deficiency, such as weakness, lethargy, stiff gait, or anorexia, or you're concerned about the patient developing hypoadrenocorticism by showing signs such as anorexia, lethargy, depression, weakness, shaking and shivering, vomiting and diarrhea, bradycardia, or collapse, it is important to stop federal treatment Confirm whether the patient's clinical signs are due to oversuppression of cortisol with an ACTH stimulation test and analysis of serum electrolytes, paying particular attention to sodium and potassium. As needed, you should institute therapeutic symptomatic care, such as the administration of dexamethasone to treat hypocortisolemia, or providing IV fluids in the form of 0.9% sodium chloride or saline to start reducing any level of hyperkalemia. 
Oftentimes, over-suppressed cortisol concentrations can show up on an ACTH stimulation test. As we've discussed, cortisol less the stimulated cortisol less than 1.45, or less commonly as seeing a lack of increase between the pre- and post-stimulated cortisol concentrations. So as an example, if your pre-cortisol was 1.5 and your post-stimulated cortisol was 1.2, that would be a negative 0.3 increase from baseline to stimulation. We call this a negative delta cortisol, what can also be a reflection of over-suppressed cortisol concentrations in this particular patient. Reassessment of the patient. First, we're going to assess the degree of clinical improvement, which could be either significant improvement of clinical signs or that clinical signs are not fully controlled. Looking into the patients that fit under the category of significant improvement, if the post-ACTH serum cortisol concentration is less than 1.45 micrograms per deciliter or less than 40 nanomoles per liter and the patient is doing clinically well, stop veteral capsules for around seven days depending on the severity of the patient's clinical signs. You would then need to return to day one of the algorithm and reinstitute veteral at a lower dose. If the post-ACTH serum cortisol is between 1.45 and 5.4 micrograms per deciliter, or 40 to 150 nanomoles per liter, you can continue treatment at the current dose of Veteril. If post-ACTH serum cortisol concentrations are greater than 5.4 to 9.1 micrograms per deciliter, or greater than 150 to 250 nanomoles per liter, Continue on the current dose of Veteril, but monitor carefully for clinical sign recurrence that may suggest uncontrolled Cushing syndrome. Continue monitoring history, physical exam, and electrolytes, as well as an ACTH stimulation test every 90 days. If the dose is altered, always recheck an ACTH stimulation test again 10 to 14 days later. If post-ACTH serum cortisol is greater than 9.1 micrograms per deciliter or greater than 250 nanomoles per liter, you can continue the current dose and recheck in one to three months, or you can return to day one of the algorithm and increase the morning dose of Veteril. Now looking at patients whose clinical signs are not fully controlled, one of the first steps to consider is to rule out concurrent illnesses that could be contributing to the clinical signs. It may be ideal to also know what the ACTH stim results are for the patient first to best guide decision making. If the ACTH stimulation test shows over or under controlled cortisol levels, it may warrant correcting this before proceeding with a full systemic workup of other comorbidities. If clinical signs are not controlled for a full 24 hour period, you can either switch the current dose to twice daily or you could return to day one of the algorithm and reinstitute Veteril at a higher dose. If post-ACTH serum cortisol is greater than 5.4 micrograms per deciliter or greater than 150 nanomoles per liter, return to day one of the algorithm and increase the dose of Veteril. To change the twice daily dosing, use a combination of capsule sizes to split the current dose into two doses. If post-ACTH serum cortisol is greater than 9.1 micrograms per deciliter or greater than 250 nanomoles per liter, total daily dose can be slowly increased and split into two doses. In my experience, I have found many patients have more reliable clinical sign control on twice daily administration of their dose. Once an optimum dose has been reached, continue monitoring history, physical exam, electrolytes, and an ACTH stimulation test at 90 days, and then every 90 days thereafter. If the dose is ever altered, always recheck an ACTH stimulation test 10 to 14 days later. If you ever have questions at any point during a patient's management, you can contact DECRA Veterinary Technical Services at 866-933 2472 as a free resource to assist you with questions or concerns to help ensure your patients continually receive excellent care. Thank you to DECRA for sponsoring this episode of Step by Step. For more information about hyperadrenic corticism, please check out vetfolio.com. Important safety information. As with all drugs, side effects may occur. In field studies and post-approval experience, the most common side effects reported were anorexia, lethargy, depression, vomiting, diarrhea, elevated liver enzymes, elevated potassium with or without decreased sodium, elevated BUN, decreased sodium to potassium ratio, hypoadrenocorticism, weakness, 
elevated creatinine, shaking, and renal insufficiency. In some cases, death has been reported as an outcome of these adverse events. Federal capsules are not for use in dogs with primary hepatic or renal disease, or in pregnant dogs. Refer to the prescribing information for complete details or visit www.decra-us.com.